Lou back with part two of Are You Designing a Game or Throwing One Together? So to continue my egregious example, what we have in this designer is a case of somebody throwing things against the wall to see what will stick. He tries to playtest the game in various ways to see what seems to work better. It seems to me to be trial and error in the older undesirable sense. It also helps show that Kickstarter is often about ideas and intentions rather than about an actual game. He had a little bit of the art for the actual game for a small number of the cards and that looked good and that probably helped the Kickstarter a lot. So I'm going to talk now briefly about the proper way to go about this. Not just trying this and that, throwing things against the wall, and I'm going to use a fairly detailed borrowed diagram and then a simpler version. Well this is the engineering design process and it's somewhat complex and while designing a game is something like engineering it's also something like project management because each time you're doing something that's rather different than what you've done before. So I use this simpler project management diagram. Here the plan is you creating the game to the point where you have a playable prototype and execute is playing that prototype first of all solo and then later with other people. While the game is being played you monitor whether it's doing what it's supposed to do, whether it's going according to plan. Control is, when you see that something isn't going to plan, what are you going to do about it? How are you going to fix it? How are you going to make it work the way you want to? And that also goes into the replan where you modify your prototype accordingly and then you go back to execute and you play it again. And you keep going round and round on that, gradually making your game better. I despise the word iterate. Yes, this is an iterative process, but the word iterate, which is often used in video games, is one of the ugliest words in the world. You are modifying and then testing again. You can call it iterate if you want. Now the scientific method is involved in here, and I'm going to use Wikipedia's description. Um, it's not in all of the design process, but it's part of it. To be termed scientific, a method of inquiry must be based on gathering observable, empirical, and measurable evidence subject to specific principles of reasoning. A scientific method consists of the collection of data through observation and experimentation and the formulation and testing of hypotheses. So this is a large part of the replan section and especially of the monitoring task in game design. But game design is a lot more than that. Unlike scientists, in most cases, you have to rely on fewer testing iterations. Fortunately, this is like usability testing, and usability testing does not require a large number of trials. I strongly recommend that you look, check out the Nielsen Norman group. I have a couple of URLs here, and alertbox.com is one that's relatively easy to remember. And read their articles. They are talking about web design, but most of what they say applies to game design, especially video game design, where you have a user interface that's very important. You have user interfaces in tabletop games, but they have over many centuries settled down and don't change too much. Now, unlike the scientist, you're making changes in a design, some actual product, as well as experimenting to see what happens. And I don't venture into analogies much, but I'm going to try one here. This question of engineering versus trial and error is comparable to how people learn software or home appliances or electronics. Unlike most people, I read the manual. It's amazing how much you can learn that way, and it's far more efficient. But what most people do is they just dive in and try things, or they simply remain ignorant. I read the manual and find out, oh, you can do this. Most people who just dive in and try things are never going to figure that out. The engineering style of game design is like reading the manual. 
The trial and error style is like diving in and trying things. It's much less efficient. But it is easier, just like not reading the manual is easier. And we can apply this to games, too. I read the rules to a game. I would rather read the rules to a game in order to learn it, unlike most people who would rather be taught. Why? Because it may take longer, but I miss less when I read the rules. And I understand the game better when I read the rules, if they're a good set of rules, than when somebody teaches me. I've discussed the whole cycle of testing and moderation at length in my learning game design course on Udemy.com. The major point is that you follow a process that relies on solving problems you've identified. You also have to know what kinds of problems might occur, like leader bashing in a card game, or many other problems, and that's why I make so many of my videos to educate people about those possible problems. Method is important, and trial and error, guess and check, is poison unless you have no choice but to use it. If you rely heavily on intuition or inspiration, more power to you, but that's not something that I want to teach aspiring game designers. If you think it's all about inspiration, I think you're dead wrong. Any more than getting ideas is all about inspiration. You have to work at something to do it well on a consistent basis. You can't hope to be bailed out by random flashes of brilliance. So, for me as a teacher, I want people to understand a good method and inspiration, intuition, or especially trial and error, are not good methods. Thanks for listening.